everyone. <laughs> Welcome to New Real Country. Yeah, we're podcast. here today with uh, <laughs> yeah. Lindsay Matthews, mm-hmm. the CEO of Birth Fit, and she does a lot of other cool stuff. <laughs> so we'll, we'll talk about all that. Um, before we get into that, let's just plug the sponsors a little bit. Mm-hmm. One of the sponsors is us, SBG Texas. Mm-hmm. Why should someone come to SBG Texas? SBG um, Texas is a premier martial arts gym. We teach jujitsu for adults and kids. We also teach, we have a really phenomenal kids program. We teach a lot of good life skills and all the great things. Mm. We've been loving it. Um, mm. Also adult program. If you haven't done jujitsu, but you're interested, this is a perfect place because we have a foundation program. Um, head coach really breaks it down mm-hmm. so anybody can learn regardless of your age, body size, or experience. Um, it's really fun. Yeah. We don't throw you into the lion's den. We actually have <laughs> right. an on-ramp so you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. We, we, there's progressions and things like that. Mm-hmm. Lindsay's in our foundations yeah. program. How are you liking it? I love it. And I think it was what I was looking for because as I told you in my intro, is that what you call it? Or consultation? Consultation, yeah. Um, I was looking for not to be thrown in with the lions. Right. Um, because that's what I had heard. You know? mm-hmm. Oh, welcome. Psh, yeah. Yeah. Just no, let's see die every time. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, I think um, the foundations class is so important. And then like you mentioned the kids program. Mm. I was wearing this sweatshirt in, um, where was I? New Orleans recently. Mm-hmm. And somebody was like, oh, you go to SPG? I was like, yeah, there's one in New Braunfels now. And they're like, God, they have the best kids programs. Oh, wow. oh, really? And apparently they went to one in Montana, but they oh, moved to New Orleans yeah. and they, it's I see. not the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not the same. Like, right, right. Yeah. My, my jiu-jitsu coach, uh, John Frankel, it's my favorite, probably my favorite saying from him is not all jiu-jitsu is created equal. Like, like it's just, everything else in life. Yeah, yeah it's just, there are really levels to things. I feel that we, we're really a premier mm-hmm. version of, of all of mm-hmm. that. Um, other sponsor is Element, uh, Electrolyte Mix. Um, if you listen to the show a lot, we always plug it. You, I'm sure, tried Dude, Element. Yeah, I got some in here right you now. You got some in there right now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, how long have you been interested? How long have you been doing the Element? Like? Oh, man. Um, maybe for a year now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I at least I at least take a packet a day, mm-hmm. and then Lance will take. You know, when he goes out on the mm-hmm. ship, he just takes like a box with him. Awesome. Um, so it's on you know subscription to our house. Sure, sure. No, I understand. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like it, it. It it's really a game changer. It's hard to absolutely. You don't understand how it's going to change it until you've sort of done it. That's yeah. yeah it's like oh, I think I'm pretty high. Everyone's like oh, I think I thought yeah. I was pretty yeah. hydrated, yeah. and it's like. I feel way better all of a sudden yeah. and it's like yeah. all right and then it it actually tastes good <laughs> which, yeah some of the yeah. different flavors like yeah. he loves the raspberry which i don't love because it's mm-hmm. i guess too tart for me mm-hmm. my favorite's the lime but yeah, i think citrus citrus yeah, yeah, citrus, citrus is hard to beat yeah. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> i don't know i like i like a lot of the flavors but Every time I come back, I usually will go on one flavor for a little while, yeah. and then it, whenever I come back to citrus, I'm always like, "Yeah, I can OG. see why I can yeah. see why they ran with that as yeah. the only flavor first, And yeah, yeah, yeah it's a good. Uh, so, anyways, uh, about hill country and Lindsay, yeah. uh, how'd you how'd you get into Texas and like tell us mm-hmm. a little bit like okay, hmm. like what brought me here, so. I'm actually born and raised in Texas. I don't know if you remember that. I was born in Houston, and then we like made our way around Texas and settled in the hill country, specifically New Braunfels. Mm. Um, My mom and stepdad married when I was in sixth grade, Mm. I believe, and the rest was kind of history. So my adolescent years and teenage years and you know growing up were all in New Braunfels, Mm. which I think I had the best you know, the best time and experience growing up in like a small town vibes, mm-hmm. but also it's like big enough to where, you know, there's city ish things happening mm-hmm. or you can drive to Austin right, or San right. Antonio, mm-hmm. like they're both an hour away. Um, but yeah, we grew up going on the river, uh, sneaking away, going or having field parties in high school. Mm. Um, I, the town was definitely still small enough whenever you got pulled over by a cop. They knew your parents, uh, and then, 
your parents would know before you even got home. Ah, oh, oh, like, oh, you can't keep this from. Oh, <laughs> wow. huh. yeah, I've kind of heard that. We had a few people have interviewed like Mark Hampton's been here since like the sixties. Really? And described like, oh, you should only be like twenty thousand people or yeah. something, and like mm. everybody knew everybody. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah there, yeah. I think when I was in high school, so I graduated high school in '01. And there was about 35,000 people here and just two high schools, like New Braunfels mm. and Canyon. Mm. Um, and then there was Smithson Valley and Smithson Valley was kind of new. Mm. Uh, but now there's like another high school out right. towards Canyon Lake mm. and Can Canyon High School doesn't even look the same. Like <laughs> it does there were cornfields all around. Mm. Yeah, like Bucky's was not there. Huh. <laughs> I know. So I think I lucked out with the the experience I had in middle school and high school. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, if you were in a bigger city from what I heard. Like, I then went on to Texas A&M, mm -hmm. which was huge. And you meet people from other towns in Texas, especially like Plano and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you realize that um, once you got in high school, some of these kids had to pick a sport to play in mm. order to, like if they wanted to be good at it mm. but i still had the opportunity and like just like many other kids in school to do multiple things whether it was um you know multiple sports or band or choir and, and a sport and things like that you could pick like two or three activities and mm. do it and not have to specialize in one Indeed. sport yeah. yeah which like at that, you're like 15, 16 years old, like, how can you? you I didn't know, know myself. Right, right. <laughs> like, no way. Crazy. Yeah. 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 But my stepdad, he actually he was born in Johnson City mm -hmm. and he grew up around here. Mm -hmm. So he's got stories for days, probably like the guy you mentioned about, mm -hmm. you know, oh, this used to be over here or this used to happen mm -hmm. here. Um, he took, he taught me and my brother and sister how to play pool. At Green Hall, so that's where we learned mm. how to play pool. Nice. Mm. And I remember, like, wow, this place is old. <laughs> <laughs> and I still love that place. <laughs> we haven't been there. What? Not enough. Not enough. Oh, like know. we've seen, but we didn't. We don't. We just. We. <laughs> anyway, it is we a place gym, to yeah. visit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Actually, I don't even know if it's open right now. That's right. part of the issue. Right. A lot of our inability to see a lot of things in the last right. year has been due to closing. Yeah, like, closing. and I don't even drink, but mm -hmm. just to go there and dance, and mm -hmm. yeah, I certainly did used to drink, but <laughs> like shoot pool, listen to, mm -hmm. I saw Willie Nelson there one time. Oh, wow. Which was huh. epic, yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. oh, cool. Oh, yeah, but you got to go check it out just to mm -hmm. say you've been. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it, I think a lot of that stuff's just been closed. A lot we we haven't been able to explore much because of that. We've mm -hmm. tended to just be a little, and then to run the gym six days a week and everything. So that just it takes you're away. You're in business, so you're yeah. tired. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then we have young kids, so it's not like after. A yeah, week, yeah. Have a yeah. So, you know, Lincoln's not really ready for pools yet. <laughs> but like, yeah. Lincoln's five. Yeah. <laughs> That's for those who don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it was a cool small town. I mean, hopefully, and I still think some vibes are still there. Mm -hmm. Just think it's grown so much because it is a place that people realize it's kind of special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like Rob Wolf realized it was special and moved to California. I was like, what are you doing moving to New Braunfels? <laughs> <laughs> with me, or yeah, with us, like, so that was like a weird. Yeah, yeah and then my it? best, fr one of my best girlfriends, Emily, she's moving here with her family in January. And she's like generations of like her family lives and was raised in los angeles mm -hmm. but she's like i'm a, I'm so over it and mm -hmm. they're literally moving like five minutes from here so oh, that's she's awesome. excited for that wow. yeah, yeah i mean I, not that's to awesome. dive into contentious waters but i know a lot of the local <laughs> texans are kind of like oh man all these californians oh. coming I get that on some level um mostly just you don't want a lot more people here but my thought on it is like is it, and there's a sort of negative tone towards the Californians. Mm -hmm. My thought is those Californians that are choosing to move here are the good ones. You know what that's I mean? What like, I'm that's kind of my yeah. take on it. Yeah. It's like, and I know there'll be some cultural changes that will come with that, but also mm -hmm. it's like, if they love, if they loved everything about California, they would be staying in California, oh, you know, like mm -hmm. they want something different. That's mm -hmm. why they're coming here. And I know there's going to be 
a lot of variation within that, but that's just how I kind of like to think yeah. of it. So we we have this chat a lot because there's Emily, myself, and then our other friend Leah in a chat group, mm. and it's you realize, especially as you start to have a family, mm. like you have your own values as a person, but then when you marry and you get in a partnership, and then you mm. start to have kids and. You like really hone in on your values and what you want in life and what you want out of life and what you want out of where you live and mm. um, the city and the community. And, you know, unfortunately, Los Angeles does not offer a lot for small business owners, families, any like any of that. Um, and so you just kind of like weigh your the risk and benefits, pros and cons. And, right. It's like, well, there's a lot more negative than, <laughs> than positive, so I understand we're that. out. Yeah. I mean, uh, we always joked with her, like, um, well, I want you to realize that what makes Texas great is that it is a red state. <laughs> and so don't make it a blue state. And she's like, don't worry. Like, I realize that's part of the value system. Mm. And mm. I'm going to vote a certain way. But regardless of like whether you believe you know red or blue or whatever, it, it does go back to values mm, and sure. you know for people to recognize that and it's I think this year more than ever has kind of brought yeah, that out right. and people realizing okay what I want in life and what's you know what's the big picture I want mm, and, mm. yeah. Sure. <sighs> did you live here the whole time or did you live in somewhere else? Um, when I when I was growing up, well, I lived. Mm -hmm in New Braunfels till 2001, then I moved to College Station for mm -hmm. Texas A&M, mm -hmm. and then I moved from College Station to Los Angeles mm -hmm. in 2006, Okay, mm -hmm. and then I spent 13 years in LA, oh, wow. and then I moved back in 2018. So mm -hmm. what made you decide to move back? <laughs> well, it's interesting, because I kept thinking, you know, um, I'm gonna grow up, right? <laughs> I'll grow yeah, up eventually, eventually. Really. Sure, yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah, right? yeah. And then you start to realize, wow, well, okay, I am 34, 35. I'm getting up there. Yeah. But I was my ex Logan, who's still a good friend of mine. We opened Deuce Gym together, mm -hmm. and um, we spent, you know, some great years in Venice building a fitness community there. And he's still there and owns the gym, and it's. Mm -hmm. You know, probably the only good thing left in Venice, mm. <laughs> like, and one of the only gyms open, because mm. uh, it's all outside. Gotcha. That makes sense. Um, it was an old garage, mm. and so you can just open the doors and the everything's outside. But um, we went through a breakup, and the it was just hard for me to be in the community, mm. which I'm sure like um, anybody that's gone through a breakup in their life, they're like, uh, sure. I get it. But also, I like I was gonna try to stay because I had a great community, like a work community. Um, you know, for in the birth world, I worked at two different birth centers, mm -hmm. and I had some awesome connections with midwives and OB guns, and you know, I built that up. And so I was like, what do I do? But long story short, I spent a bunch of time like on myself and my spiritual development and. One night, some, something just told me, hey, you need to move back to Texas. Hmm. And I was like, huh, okay, let's check this out. And literally, I came, this was probably in like June or July of 2018, mm -hmm. that I got this, some will say a download or an idea. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And so the next month, like the first weekend in August, I came and um, I went to Austin. I came with a girlfriend and I had checked out one place to live <laughs> and it was perfect. I signed a lease. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're not sure. That's it was like, yeah. and I'm somebody that's like, okay, if I try on the decision and it feels right in my body, <laughs> then I'm going to go for it. Where, you know, other people are like, let me just think about it for right, a week. Right. Mm -hmm. I try to think about things for a little bit, um, but it felt right. Mm -hmm. um, that weekend, I also went into somebody and I cut all my hair off. Oh. Like my hair was probably like down oh, to here, oh, oh. and I cut almost 12, 13 inches off. Oh. So it was like shifting all the energy. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I decided, okay, sign the lease. Let's do it. Like it, the stars couldn't have lined oh. better. I just knew it was meant to be, and um, that was August. So then in October. 
Um, I lived with one of my girlfriends from about midway through September until the end of October. And then November 2018, I started driving back to Texas and my stepdad met me and he drove with me and we kind of had a fun little road trip and it was just perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was kind of like, I knew that chapter in Los Angeles and Venice and everything was done mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it just felt so complete and I was like, mm -hmm. okay, it's time, time to move on. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. yeah. <laughs> now, probably now is a good time for you to tell us what you do and all that because it, it came out a little Segway, bit. So, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. so I own a company called BirthFit mm -hmm. and it started as a blog in 20, probably 2012, 2013. Mm -hmm. And it was just my experience as a chiropractor, a birth doula, and a strength and conditioning coach. And so, well, or CrossFit coach at the mm -hmm. time. So I like wore these three different hats mm -hmm. and I tried to keep them all in their separate lanes. Mm -hmm. But they all kind of like, you know, right. you can't do that. Right, right. <laughs> you no, can't no. do that. You can't compartmentalize life as much mm -hmm. as you want to. Right. Um, and so I just started writing, you know, about my experiences, especially with um, women training and men being their doula or seeing them as a chiropractor and just all the stuff that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I probably grew up very similar to a lot of people, like I call it the standard American lifestyle, like the standard American diet. Mm -hmm. And I grew up watching birth on TV, like, ah, scary. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> water breaks, yeah. all hell breaks loose. Like, <laughs> everybody's screaming. She's screaming at her husband or whoever. Mm -hmm. I hate you. Like, so whenever all this started happening for me, and I be, like got immersed in the birth world, like my belief systems around birth and being a woman and everything were completely being shattered mm -hmm. because for one like back it up I grew up with asthma and there was a time mm -hmm. where I got in the hospital really bad and they didn't think I was gonna make it but the hospital freaks me out mm -hmm. and so I kind of wrote off having kids mm -hmm. and I was like if you if having a having a baby means you gotta go to the hospital, then we're not gonna cross that bridge. Mm -hmm. um, so then I got exposed to more options, which I did not even know were a thing. And I discovered, oh, you could do a home birth or a birth center birth, mm -hmm. or you could actually have a pleasant experience in the hospital. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, okay, so there's all these things out there that I, if I don't know, I know like my sister or my friend or whoever doesn't know. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so that was some of the stuff I was putting in the blog and mm -hmm. it just kind of blossomed from there. Mm -hmm. And then in 2017 was the first time kind of I made money on it. Oh. <laughs> that always helps. Yeah. So I had classes like prior to that, the first like live class I had was called the birth fit postpartum series. Mm -hmm. And I wrote this for rehab after birth. And mainly because it was like a light bulb to me that um, we have a vaginal birth or a cesarean birth and there's no rehab, there's no protocol, mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I can tear my ACL and I know exactly what I'm doing. Right. Like they got me a PT, like my surgeon was like, go to a chiropractor, go to an acupuncturist. Mm -hmm. And he was awesome, but you have a major abdominal surgery and they're like, we'll see you in six weeks. Deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, deal with it. Yeah. So I was like, what? And, you know, at that time, prior, I was in the sports rehab world of chiropractic. And I'm grateful for those experiences because that helped me create this world and this recovery and rehab and stuff for birth fit. And so I wrote the curriculum for the birth fit postpartum series and started teaching it out of Deuce. And it's so wild to even think about that people like trusted me and would come to this spot mm. because like it's an old auto body shop in Venice. <laughs> and here's these moms coming in, either wearing their baby or rolling the stroller up. And they're like, is this the right? And you know, they come in, we have the first class. And then four weeks later, they're like, can we do another, can we do oh, another awesome. series? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah, so it was like break even until then. But then in 2017 was the first time that I started having seminars where I would teach other coaches mm -hmm. and other professionals. And then we put 
like programming online for Ooh, people. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And prior to that, I was like, I don't know. People would ask me, will you just put some programs online? It's like every pregnancy and birth is different. I don't know. There's no one size fits all model. Mm. But I do have universal like themes and methodologies mm. and you know thoughts like that. But um, yeah, and then it just kind of took off in 2017 and 18. And I, in 2018, I stopped doing chiropractic full time mm. and just concentrated on birth fit. And which, thank God, because that's the year I also moved. <laughs> and yeah, it's so wild to look back and think now. Oh. Like it grew exponentially, and I had no idea what I was doing as a business owner. I feel like finally this year I'm learning what I should have known in 2017. Seems like that's, that's a common <laughs> mm -hmm. message right? from all yeah. the business owners. It's like, Dang. if only I knew this, yes. like when I started it. Yeah. I'm sure we'll do the same thing. Huh. It's our first year. Yeah. After a couple of years, it's like, I don't know what I was doing. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> you right. don't know. You're just like, you know what it feels like? And I think somebody used this analogy like, it's a water hose, right? And mm -hmm. you're just trying to get a little bit of water, oh, yeah. trying to yeah. learn yeah. and trying Take not to drown. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> when we were opening this gym, we had to go up to Montana to train with Travis Davison, the VP of SVG. Mm -hmm. And woo -wee, that was two we weeks ago. Two weeks, yeah. and yeah, I think I experienced like all the emotions I oh. experienced in my whole life in that two weeks. Absolutely. Like, fear, excitement, overwhelm, mm -hmm. like, you know, mm -hmm. all this, like, yeah, oh, just crazy was, feelings. And yeah. I would have like chugging from the yeah, fire hose, drowning <laughs> on so the fire hose. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're in a kiddie pool and somebody's just like, stand up. You're like, oh, okay. And then you fall back down. Right, right. <laughs> oh my God. There were like a couple nights there where we were just like, we're just going to sit in tonight. Like, just try <laughs> to like. Process, yeah. You've given us a lot of tasks. We haven't really had any yeah. time to work on those yeah. tasks. Right. So I'm just going to look at this. Uh, but having said that, actually, like, I really appreciate how oh, Travis and Kisa always so remind us because they mm. can see it in our faces. Mm. Like, I know it's shock. a lot. Right. Yeah. right, right. Like, deer in the headlights. Yeah. Like, mm. You know, remember, we did it for 10 years. Right, right, right. It's mm. not something that we did, like, overnight. Yeah. So don't ever think that you can do all this, yeah. like, mm -hmm. in this year. And, they're it's right. so great when people remind you of that. Totally. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. Lindsay, this yeah. has only been 12 months. Right. Or, yeah. So, mm -hmm. Sure. So I'm like, that is so true, right? <laughs> you really have to have that. I think business, the long term perspective mm -hmm. is everything. Like, I mean, I know there's a few lightning businesses that I you know. open and, oh, you know, it's just money in a box, sort mm -hmm. of. But, like, I think most that right. isn't the common no. trend, you know? Yeah. Like, the, and one know. of the best pieces of advice, like, which rings true more so this year than anything mm -hmm. was uh, the one I got along the lines of like any successful business is adaptable mm -hmm. like they can pivot on sure. it. Mm -hmm. and I kept hearing that this year and I was like oh it's so true this yeah. year's yeah. a big proving be. ground yeah. right yeah. like yeah. consistency yeah. and adaptability right. yeah because yeah. 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 you can go out hot and like mm -hmm. we did in 2017 and make a ton of money but like I messed up so much mm -hmm. <laughs> in 2017 and 2018. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's just like, yeah, you, the, the consistency and being able to adapt mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. see where holes are, where right. you're bleeding money or where, right, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, did you get affected by COVID? This yeah, year? so, I mean, I'm pretty open about it because they like, you know, I want people to hear about, it's a shit show for anybody. Right, right. Um, but so BirthFit technically was about 50 50 with our revenue streams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these were like live in classes, mm -hmm. or live in person events, mm -hmm. like seminars. Mm -hmm. And then we have a once a year summit, which was kind of a cool experience. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. yeah. yeah, like once a year. And um, the past two years, not um, this year, obviously, but the past two years, mm -hmm. it sold out at 150 people. Wow. And so, in the, those two years, I was in Austin. And to give you some um, kind of uh, like background, I had the first summit in my backyard with seventy-five dollars in the bank. <laughs> oh wow! Nice, nice. So we we escalate. Sure. We sure. we got a little better. Sure. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, Did you call it summit at the time too? Yeah, I, called uh, it the I like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I love I like that, that yeah. ambition. Yeah, yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. It's a yeah. summit. Yeah, like twelve people came. And I was like, it was coming. Like <laughs> that's awesome. 
12 believers. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but yeah, it grew exponentially, right? And then, um, so we had the summit and then we had seminars, like coach seminars. Mm. Um, and then the online. So it was about 50 50. And when February started hitting, I noticed that there was like five summit tickets sold. Mm. And no seminar tick like people weren't mm. doing the in person stuff. Right. And this was like mid to late February. Mm -hmm. and I was like, what's going on? And I just was like kind of like feeling the pulse of things. Mm. And I was like, what's going on? And I was asking Imbo, who was in LA, who's moving here. Mm -hmm. I was like, what's going on out there? She's like, this pandemic thing. Like people are talking about a pandemic. Mm. And then literally I was supposed to go speak at um, a conference in Atlanta, like the weekend that they called the pandemic. Mm. And like on Thursday or Wednesday, I was supposed to fly out Thursday on Wednesday. They're like, don't come. It's going virtual. Mm. It's like, what? So everything, you know, just shut down. Yeah, it happened really fast. So fast. Yeah, I remember, yeah. That, yeah. So fast. We were supposed to go to the SB. I was supposed to go to the SBG spring camp. I had a couple couple guys in the gym were going to come. We right, barely had the gym open and they were ready yeah. to go out. And then got got right, shut yeah. down. Like, mm. we had to cancel everything. It yeah. was such a mess. Right. Like, yeah. So, that yeah, immediately we canceled Summit, which mm. we had already put a deposit down. Oh. We had already put, oh. like, room blocks we had already oh, yeah. paid like uh not speakers but um what do you call it like, audio visual stuff sure. put, yeah. you know we put money into yeah. it yeah. and Sorry. oh my god i was like <laughs> <laughs> so then it caused us blessing in disguise you know um long story short to like look at birth it as a whole mm. okay who do we want to be are we true to our values our mission mm. statement do we want to read redo any of this and we literally redid everything from the inside out and i just say it's a covid blessing we like cut all the fluff cut the fat mm -hmm. cut the bullshit um mm -hmm. but you know for me this was a big learning experience because i had to let go of our staff mm -hmm. our um seminar staff mm -hmm. and these are like eight women that i love mm -hmm. and they're just like soul like souls of the earth and like mm -hmm. the best humans and they live in different parts of the U.S. And, you know, I just remember their faces and me telling them, guys, we, this is, doesn't exist anymore right now. Like, do we have to just close this? Mm. Like, th if this was a business, this branch of it is closing. Um, and looking at their faces and they're like, we understand, you know, but just like puppy dogs and like, mm. well, when are we going to hang out again? I, like, I don't know. <laughs> And that was the saddest part because we all like would see each other at least two or three times a year. Mm -hmm. And this year, like we haven't seen each mm -hmm. other at all. Um, and so now instead of like 10 of us working behind the scenes at birth, that there's four of us. Mm -hmm. um, but on the positive side, it's allowed us to, you know, restructure, get clear on our values. Mm -hmm. And we've redone all of our online programs. So every prenatal training program, every postpartum rehab, <coughs> excuse me, training program, everything. And we moved everything over to Train Heroic, which is a online, like an app. Mm -hmm. And it's great for strength and conditioning and delivering programs. Mm -hmm. And um, like a lot of strength and conditioning college coaches use them and power athlete uses them. Um, and that's been a huge blessing in disguise because our community wanted more mobile friendly stuff mm -hmm. and we had kind of explored the app option but what we wanted was going to be you know too much money for what we wanted to deliver mm -hmm. and they they've already done a phenomenal job of putting together this app mm -hmm. so we're like oh yeah okay we just have to figure out how to use this mm -hmm. um and then we've you know kind of tapped into an audience that we didn't even know existed basically on the internet, mm -hmm. you know, um, where I think most of our clients before came from these in-person mm -hmm. experiences or like two or three degrees of separation, like somebody's sister or friend or whoever, where now people are finding us um, on Google via a blog or a video or, mm -hmm. you know, something that they search and we come up. Mm -hmm. nice. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Huh. So that's been interesting and a learning experience mm -hmm. for me as a business owner. Right. Yeah. 
But yeah, it's been a big year of learning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think we had a similar experience. Like, it was devastating because we yeah. opened at the end of February and then we were asked to shut mm -hmm. down like in the second week of March. Yeah. So we opened for one week for consultation and sign people up and then two weeks of classes. Oh my God. And it was going really well and mm -hmm. we waited so long to open. Like there were mm -hmm. many people who knew SVG Fought were so, so excited to, to yeah. join uh, SVG Texas. And then, so it was devastating, but then it, I don't know, looking back, it was actually a good time because it was too overwhelming. Like we were just <laughs> we're starting, so much, yeah, so yeah, much, yeah. just two of us, yeah. you know, and I finally were in full operation. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, just, I think we ended up using that time really well mm -hmm. to right. be, you know, think reset. and re reset mm -hmm. it, reset yeah. and kind of get ready, like emotionally so, too. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say, I'll give her credit during the time period. So <laughs> she actually kind of uh, critiqued the foundations course, I'll put it mildly, <laughs> um, and made me sit back down. And so like I have, I have like a master's in education. So one of my basic skills is curriculum planning and like my ability to like take materials that already exist, but reorganize yeah. them into like a, a process and a flow. And like, I hadn't really done that. I was just kind of taking what we already had and just shelling it out. And, mm. and she was like, I, you know, as a beginner to this, I don't follow where right, you're going right. basically. Yeah. And I, I think foundations at our gym is a million times better because of that. It was Ooh. hard to take actually. It was hard to take. I was going to say, how do you receive that feedback? Not well, <laughs> not well at all. It's sort of like, what do you know? You just started. Yeah. How dare you kind right, of, you know, right. like, and, uh, you know, and, and not to criticize the materials from SVG because they were great, but I just felt that, you know, people move something as far forward as they can and you're able to stand on their shoulders and like, all I did was tweak, you know, all I was doing is tweaking. I didn't have to, recreate I didn't have to recreate all that stuff ahead of it. So like, and that's something that, you know, that's kind of what I say, just even in learning jujitsu. Someone asked me last night, what do I do to get better? It's like, learn everything I'm teaching you before you think of innovating. Yeah. Don't try to innovate before you've actually learned the thing, you know, like, cause that's, where you start developing all these bad habits and bad yeah. abilities like you really have to and that's one of my main focuses is i i really and this comes from john like my coach always saying it's like don't reinvent the wheel you know like yeah. always for a reason. <laughs> yeah like always stand on the shoulders of giants always yeah. take from things that people have already done don't try to i think i feel like young young people have that perspective of like i need to make my mark like I'll, I better not expose myself to anything so I can make this totally super fresh creative mm -hmm. mark. And it's like, mm -hmm. that's not how the world in any field works. Yeah, like totally. you have to absorb everything previously done and you add on to it. Mm -hmm. You don't just fresh bomb things. Like, yeah. Like, but yeah. And it's like so awesome that they paved the way for right. you. Like I think right. about that and you know, the birth world or the string, right. the string right. world, like if they hadn't done that, we'd be right. so far behind. Right. Totally, it. totally. Yeah. <laughs> Don't try to start from scratch. Right. You know, yeah. like yeah. you're you're just squandering all that effort, yeah. really. So I, that's always my goal is to not squander existing knowledge, existing you know yeah. know how, basically, yeah. like as much as possible. And it's not always easy, but that's like a just. I think mm. it took me a long time to get that too, mm. but like. Everybody wants to be the most original soul in the universe, kind <laughs> of like, like but it's, it's only s new is like an extra 1% it's on so, oh other existing God, yeah. ideas, not 99% uh, mm -hmm. or something. Like, yeah. Yeah. Such a small fraction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to get going to pick up Already? these kids. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So with you, you too. Now you guys can finish off. Okay. Yeah, we'll finish off. Bye. Up right Bye. Now. Bye. Uh, we have I'm quite a few podcasts right? where she has to pop out. And I keep, <laughs> I keep running. Mother's my, beauty, yeah. 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 Right. yeah. But I had like a, a fun thing that I was thinking earlier on something you said about having the, just a fun anecdote, like you're talking about having the, first summit in your backyard. Oh my gosh. And yeah. just, I, so I come from a couple different backgrounds. One is the Jiu Jitsu thing and the other is yoga. So yeah, I had like 20, 22 years in that. And there was a point in time where I was really, as one of my teachers put it, like Mr. Yoga. Like I was, I was called meditation Mike in college like that, that everybody called me. 
I was I worked for a not this nonprofit for a well, very long time, fifteen years, and um, just the teacher that the Indian teacher that I learned so much from, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, is like he's the man in India. Yeah. I mean, like the prime minister's got him on speed dial. I mean, like he's a big deal. Like like they close airports when he arrives and stuff. Like if anyone like of Indian descent is listening to this, they'd be like, oh, oh. they like oh yeah, they know exactly who he is. Like especially if they lived in the Bangalore region or something. But um, a story from him that I've always loved is his his guru, his teacher was Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And Maharishi Mahesh Yogi was the guy that taught the Beatles. So, oh my God. so you know, like when the, Be yeah. when the Beatles are the ones that really, you look at the yoga revolution and there's so many things you can talk about the history of yoga, but one of the biggest things that brought meditation and yoga to the whole Western world was the Beatles getting into it. That's so interesting because yeah. they're so influential. Like, right, right. Their their yeah. level of influence is yeah. uh, they're just such a they're a, they're just such a major cultural moment, totally. and I, I think it's hard to imagine that like what a band could, today would have to do to have that mm -hmm. kind of impact. It's impossible. But yeah, yeah. um, but Mahesh Yogi, like Maharishi well, Mahesh Yogi, like there's this great story. Shri Shri was his right hand man. He was just a young guy, like sixteen, seventeen, doing all this stuff for him. And they set up like a, a conference in India. And Maharishi Maharishi Yogi was never popular in India. He only really got his popularity outside of oh. India. And some, I mean, like minor popularity mm -hmm. in India, major popularity outside. Sri Sri started off similarly outside, and now he's like huge in India. Mm -hmm. I knew him when he was big outside India and <laughs> lesser known in India. But, anyways, he was saying like Mahesh, like Maharishi Maharishi Yogi put, um, this conference together for like he was like organized it for twenty thousand people and like eight people showed up or something. <laughs> and my teacher, Shri Shri, he's young, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar was like, What do we do? And he's like, organize the next one for forty thousand people. Yeah. And he was like, They'll think we're crazy. And he's like and he was like, and I love this answer. The answer was they already think we're crazy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. they're not gonna ever think we're not crazy. So, yeah. And he's like, if we organize it for forty thousand, we'll get sixteen people. <laughs> Which I was like, we'll double. Yeah. It, and I've used that for years because I've I've had so, and I'm sure you've been here with this where it's like you organize the thing and you show up and there's like, a person. ah person, yeah, yeah one yeah. guy shows up and you're like, and I, and I think the difference between people that kind of, I don't know what make it means, but like you, you still have to sit there and teach that. Do you oh, know what I mean? And it's like the practice of it right right yeah. and in, in those years of repping like classes i would have these yoga things and it was like no one showed up a lot mm -hmm. of the time and then or one person showed up and i still taught and i just totally. went through with it and people were like you sure shouldn't mm -hmm. i go you know it's like no no we're just gonna do this and it's like the, yeah all those years of repping just totally. it made all the difference when there were 10 people mm -hmm. and then 20 and then now i have bigger classes and stuff like yeah. that and just yeah you cannot you know, you just, I mean, sometimes you have to sit back and go, okay, well, am I putting the word out here? <laughs> or like, is this, right, is right. this the right time? I, I, there's all of that too, but I think you, you just have to kind of, you do have to accept those humble beginnings. And I love oh, that absolutely. story of the back, the backyard. And just like, <laughs> I, I see it. I, I can, I, I feel it immediately because I've yeah. been in the backyard. I've yeah. done, I've taught from the backyard, you know, and it's like, yeah, but yeah. It's, yeah. For the the humble beginnings is so real, like mm. the being able to, like even like even here, like show up for one or two people mm -hmm. if that, that that's all that shows mm -hmm. up in their mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. And there are so many times in Los Angeles that you know the first sure the fir the crazy thing was the first postpartum series I did sold out. Mm. But then when I wanted to offer it at a second venue, which was across town, mm. that it did not, and it was like one person, and I was like. What do we got? <laughs> it's, and it's so hard to read those things. You totally. know, you're like, what totally. happened? Is it, you know, it, what it, did I do? And you never know if it's you or if it was rainy that day. Right. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or, like, I have classes here some nights where it's like, no one's here. Okay. And at first you're like, you have a moment always where you're like, yeah. what did I say on Tuesday? <laughs> you know, like, sort of like, I mean, I think yeah. about Tuesday's yeah. class and then I'll hear from someone, like, someone will text me, it's like, hey, Traffic's backed up on I-35. There's yeah. some huge accident. There was one night, there was some huge accident. Like, 
everyone was like 30 yeah. minutes late or something and it was kind of like and a lot of people just turned around yeah. i'm pretty sure and like you're like oh okay like but yeah you definitely man you got to be willing to drive through on stuff Persist, yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's huge i don't know yeah. I just, that backyard story i was like <laughs> I, I feel that 100 percent. i mean yeah. this gym in some sense started in my garage oh. when we moved here rob and i were training in the garage with nikki and stuff and I think Jason Kilgore of like Trident <laughs> Strength and Conditioning came over one time or something like because so we couldn't get the thing open like and just, you'll remember those things yeah, for yeah, sure was, uh, like you'll look back and laugh oh my god I remember when we opened and then they had to close and <laughs> well I and that's tangent but I tell people a lot of times I get a lot of people especially former SBG guys that are in different parts of the country they were in SBG. They move to another part. I'm not trying to disparage all other gyms, mm -hmm. but frankly, a lot of them suck. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they move somewhere else. I got a guy, a friend, this guy down in Houston that's he's like, you know, I tried this gym. I don't yeah. like it. I don't like it. You know, he got so spoiled at SBG and he was up in like Portland and like the headquarters. Mm -hmm. He was in Edmonton with, they, they've got a great gym up there. Yeah. You know, these guys are Steve Winjet runs the gym. He's like super cool and just, you know, he's like, oh, what do I, he's asking me, like, what do I do? It's too far from the commute up to NB. Yeah. And he came up for our, like a seminar or whatever, and super cool guy. And I was like, man, get two, three people and just start in a gym. Yeah. You start in your garage, you know, just throw some, get some mats and yeah. you might be better than going to a bad gym and you probably get injured less. You can work on the things you want to work on. And I mean, that's all the CrossFit stuff was at the end mm -hmm. of the day, in the beginning, yeah. it's all in garages and little, yeah. like, like it wasn't, yeah. I, I yeah. Rob's always talking about the the beginnings the of it all, of and you know, yeah. none of these things are what they look like now. They're, no, uh, so. they're so far from it. Like mm -hmm. my boyfriend Lance was part of CrossFit in the beginning, mm -hmm. like, and he used to teach the seminars in um, South America. But he mm -hmm. said, I I forget. He learned about it when he was in the Marines, mm -hmm. and he randomly ran into Greg Glass's ex-wife. Yeah. And huh. she, he Which was one? Working, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. He, he ran, in, she ran into her, he was working uh -huh. on it, she was like, you would probably like this thing called CrossFit, and uh -huh. he wrote down the website, and he took it back to his computer uh -huh. and looked it up, because we didn't have, you right. know, all right. the phone right, right, right. No, no, now. No. Yeah. And he looked it up and was like, oh, okay. And so he started doing main site, just huh. basically wherever he could. Huh. Um, and that's, you know, was the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah, which is so far from what sure. we see now with sure. the games on TV or, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I find a, a lot of inspiration in that. I think other people hopefully can find that inspiration. If if you're driving in that direction, not everybody has to be an entrepreneur yeah. or something like- You gotta want it. You gotta want it, yeah. <laughs> but you definitely can't, it's really easy to get lost in that idea of like, I'm an entrepreneur today. Tomorrow, I'll have a Fortune 500 company yeah. or something yeah. like that. You, you can't hold yourself to that standard or it just becomes, you, you'll never get off the ground on anything. You, have no. to, you gotta get in the backyard, gotta get in the garage, yeah. gotta, you know, just got to do all that stuff. Glassman's, like, I don't know really hard. I, I know so little about CrossFit, actually. I just kind of, but I happen to know a fair number of people you know, like, connected people, to yeah, it. That's the weird yeah. thing. So, like, I know very little, but I was over in Korea training jiu-jitsu, and it was early in my jiu-jitsu training. So, this is like 10 years ago. John Frankel, my coach, is from Chico and just knew Glassman. Whoa. He just knew him. Yeah. So, and Glassman used to let him train with him for free. <laughs> So Glassman was like, oh, you're a grad school student. John was doing his PhD at Harvard. So he's like, oh, you don't have any money. You can just train with me. And then when John went back to Korea, John, he had already started jiu-jitsu in Korea. He's the godfather of Korean jiu-jitsu. But like he brought CrossFit over. And I remember him just saying like, that was the first time I heard it. He's like, oh, I'm going to do a CrossFit workout next Thursday or something. And then people kind of described it. I was like, that sounds scary i was like that i don't intense. i don't think yeah. i can do that and that's how crossfit started in korea that's like so john started jujitsu in korea and started crossfit in korea oh just God. by you know and then and he knew of it basically because he'd already run the gym with rob wolf mm -hmm. for like a year in chico yeah. and then he was like eh, i don't want to run a gym and like oh, no. i'm gonna go back and 
I mean, he has a PhD in Korean literature, so academia pulled him back in. Yeah. And it's weird. Getting the PhD pulled him out of academia. And then pulled him back in? The gym pulled him back into academia. Oh, okay. And now he kind of, he's really good at balancing both worlds, oh. kind of, which is, I was an academic too, so I don't know if you know that about me, but like, yeah, I was a professor and for 10 years and stuff like that, and I'm, I pulled myself out of academia into the gym world. Most people in the academic world are, you couldn't pull them out for anything, sort of. They're, they're stuck there? They're stuck there, and they're kind of obsessed with it. Okay. You, to get a PhD, you sort of have to have an obsession, and like, <laughs> that's why I never pursued the PhD. I just realized mm. there was nothing I was obsessed enough about. To, that's a good realization. You gotta like it so much that you'd be willing to hate it. Is that That's what John told me, yeah. or someone told me that. It's like... You gotta love something enough to be willing to hate it. Yeah. Which is like, I feel that way about jujitsu. Like, mm. I love it enough that I'd be willing to hate it for periods, kind yeah. of. Is that, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's kind of like almost like a, am I gonna marry this person? Do you totally. do you love them enough to be willing to hate them? Because they're gonna piss you off. Somewhere. Right. And like yeah. be able to move through the hate mm -hmm. back into. That's what I, I didn't really. I always yeah. thought it's so academic, but that's pretty good. Good way to put it, because mm. you know if like your passion your birth mm -hmm. like birth it for me mm -hmm. over the last two years i've gone back and forth like is this really what i want to do is this do i do i really love this and you must hate it someday it's like <laughs> someday it's gotta be like, like, ah! like yeah i'm sure like but know. then you get and i'm sure it's similar to you or you where i would get messages or cards like i don't know how people totally. would find my address but right. they would send me something like a small gift totally. and be like this I made this for you. I know it's not much, but mm -hmm. I just want you to know how much you impacted mm -hmm. my birth experience. I'm like, mm -hmm. whoa, okay, restart. <laughs> yeah, no, those are so huge. I'm, I get them in the adult program mm -hmm. a lot. Like, I always feel like I'm David Cop, David Copperfield or something mm -hmm. in there. I'm like showing you guys magic tricks, basically yeah. that you can do with your body, and I really thrive off of the the eyes, like people being like, oh. yeah. Oh, like, and I always get new cohorts coming in to always give me that, like, like, you weren't here this week, but there's, like, an up kick from Open Guard. And whenever <laughs> I set that up and everybody sees it for the first yeah. time, especially the guy who's, I'll set it up on him, and I cock that <laughs> foot back and the look in their eyes, and, like, this is what we were all building toward. And they're, like, oh, this makes so their much, this not, makes so much yeah. sense. And it's just, like, wow. Because it, usually people are, like, oh, I don't think this is going to work. And you realize yeah. I was always just corralling you to get this up mm -hmm. kick and it's like oh shit this totally <laughs> works and like you, there's like this totally like lizard brain fear that yeah. runs through you when you see that foot cock back and it's mm -hmm. like oh yeah. jiu -jitsu is for real kind of yeah, like magic. And, yeah. but uh <laughs> the um in the kids program we all have we get these feedback this feedback from parents sometimes and it's like he's doing better in school and all this That's and we huge. know it's from yeah. when he started here and i'm like are you I, me i'm always like are you sure like no, I, like that's how i feel but no yeah. it makes so much sense because it's an outlet it's mm -hmm. like an inner like mm -hmm. energy corral mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. source they're learning how to socialize protect themselves use their body mm -hmm. gain confidence I, you know i have a, like a tertiary comment question this is something that came to me this week and i'm not trying to be negative about mm -hmm. other things but like you have a business i feel like i feel like we're on the same page as running a business <laughs> yeah. like obviously we need to make money because we gotta we gotta have lights on gotta and, pay the bills. and i've got a family, family to support and all that yeah. kind of stuff so we have to learn the admin side of it which is the worst part of it yeah. i'm sure but we're mostly driven by a passion to do it do you feel weird when you go like i'm sure there's times where you go to like business mixer type things <laughs> and stuff like that do you feel weird when you mix with people that are actually still, but they're actually really just about the money? Yeah. Do you feel that? Like that oil and water? I, mean, I, I kind of feel that sometimes. I'm I like, get it. Ugh. Yeah. Like, yeah I was like, like right away. Mm. And yeah. So I used to be really good about going to networking things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. especially in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. But then I've been really selective over the last couple of years. Interesting. Yeah. For, for mm -hmm. that reason, I'm mm -hmm. like, I, I always try to look at choices I make in like one or two or three mm -hmm. steps beyond. Mm -hmm. um, like, it, okay, if I'm going to meet somebody here, like mm -hmm. 
possibly what is their career, what do they do, what could mm -hmm. be their, their long game. Because mm. um, I get a, a ton of requests for birth that like, mm. hey, can we partner? Can we do an Instagram giveaway? Can we I do see. this? I see. And, you know, it could be a shit product. Mm -hmm. And I look at the product and there's like tons of sugar in it. Mm -hmm. Or it's like a crappy cream. I've been there already, yeah. Right? Yeah. And you're just like, no. Mm. But yeah, so it's. Hey, can I come sell candy at yeah. your gym? I literally had a guy sitting like right here on oh the sofa, God. like, wanting to I'm put like, some. Did you read machine, anything you know, like, that we were about? Like, yeah, like, <laughs> like no. oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Mm. So thank God I have Kat, who's like mm. our admin queen, our COO mm. person, everything. Mm. I'm like, Kat, if they, like, if they don't align with our values, if it's like, mm. if it's a supplement and it's not like clean, real whole mm -hmm. foods, um, mm -hmm. You know we're we're big on promoting like real foods high quality meats you know lots of totally. meats plants veggies um, right there with you I understand. Like, <laughs> and so if it's somebody trying to promote a vegan diet and this you know is kind of this was hot in la but um sure it's like we don't really agree with the vegan diet and pregnancy and postpartum there's I yeah. so many nutrients missing I totally understand. and so yeah. that's a big one where people are like look can we do this green algae protein thing we're like no like get yeah. out of here <laughs> yeah i know i mean it's uh yeah it, I, it's really not contentious like at the end oh. of the day like adults whatever you choose to do diet wise adults are extremely like rob just had a big post on this it was a couple months ago but it's like adults are pretty adaptable mm -hmm. like I, I was a vegetarian for like 14 years or something yeah. it's like adults are pretty adaptable like once you and this is just i mean this is just history yeah when human yeah, beings other tribes when cultures. human beings hit about 20 you know like they basically live to 60 and that goes back maybe <laughs> a million years like as long as you don't get hit with a rock at that point yeah. you're most likely statistically going to make the 60 and that's pre-agriculture yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. you'll be you'll thrive you know but like we look at child mortality and it's it's all in the early stages when the body's not that well formed and unfortunately there's a, quite a few stories of you go that all vegan for the kid and don't always get those outcomes that yeah. are pretty good. I mean, it isn't probably every single time, but right. there's, there's enough that it's anomalies. issues. Like yeah. it's enough that there's issues and something to be thinking about there. Totally. Like, and I, yeah, I, I would not recommend it to anyone. And um, especially not if the idea is that this is going to promote optimized health or something. Right. I, I don't think there's solid research to back that you you're yeah. cherry picking and you're really looking yeah. past some pretty, pretty solid evidence to, yeah. to draw that conclusion. I mean, get them through the formative years. And if, if you feel like that is such, if you really believe in the ethical arguments, the environments, which I personally don't right. agree with, but right, right. fine, right. I get it, but I don't think you're on a good grounds from the no. basis of like this nutrition at early levels. I, I don't see it like, I, yeah. Whenever I was first, whenever birth that started, mm -hmm. there were, I was like, we have four pillars. They're fitness, nutrition, mm -hmm. mindset, and connection. Mm -hmm. And so I dove big into nutrition, and I looked at nutrition, you know, different cultures mm -hmm. and tribes around the world. And, like, even some of the, I don't even say seminars, but learning weekends mm -hmm. and weeks and retreats that I would do mm -hmm. were with, um, you know, outside of the city, and mm -hmm. people would come up from Mexico and teach us. And mm -hmm. it was super interesting but um they would like cultures would save their organ meats and the yeah. raw dairy and mm -hmm. eggs and like all that the nutrient dense food for those those people trying to conceive pregnancy mm -hmm. and sure. the first year postpartum sure and it makes so much sense and you know the crazy thing is anytime i get somebody that comes into the like my chiropractic office to ask um can you help with fertility and the first thing I ask them is, do you eat meat? And if they say no, I ask them why, like, mm -hmm. can we explore this? Mm -hmm. um, and if they say yes, and then I ask them what kinds, if it's mm -hmm. just chicken, I'm like, oh, okay, we need to, mm -hmm. we need to branch out here. Mm -hmm. But then I'll usually put them on an organ supplement. I'll say, nice. I need you to explore some type of organ meat supplement. Sure. Sure. Um, just because in our diets, like, we don't eat liver. We don't like. We don't eat nose to tail. You know, it's, and it's just 
I feel like the science just, I feel like when I went vegetarian, the science wasn't as clear. No, it's like, it, it, we, under, <laughs> we understood things fairly poorly and, and now it's more like bioavailable nutrients within mm -hmm. food. The understanding of that has changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. Like where it's like, we were just like, you know, back in just as, this is like 1998, 99. It was like, this has this much iron. Oh, this has this yeah. much iron. It's like, iron isn't all the same. It's We've totally. since in, totally improved. We're like, oh, actually, this iron your body will absorb, this will pee out. You right, know, right, like, right. It's a, you won't it's absorb any iron, of this. but yeah. your body doesn't absorb it. So totally. it doesn't really matter if it's this high in iron. It often isn't even that high in those. Right, right. Um, so, like, God, just stuff like that. I mean, just not. The more I learned, that's what took me out of vegetarianism, mm -hmm. really. It was just the more, it was just like more research kept coming out. Yeah. And I'm like looking at it and I'm like, why am I still doing this? Like, and it was more of like a pattern for me than mm -hmm. anything else. So at that point, a habit, I suppose. Was, I was just going to say, it becomes habit and then right. comfort. And, right, yeah, right. Yeah. It was, it was uh, tricky to break it in some sense for me, but uh, it just made the most sense for me. And, and right away, my athleticism, I'd already been doing jiu-jitsu for years. And this is about... I'm, Already, my jiu-jitsu got so much better. Yeah. I wasn't injured nearly as much. Like, mm -hmm. just everything, like, I used to just get all banged up, and I, I would heal so slowly. Yeah, I would have to avoid the gym. Thing. I was yeah. just healing so slowly on stuff. Something would get a little off, which still can happen, but, like, the rate of recovery for that was, like, yeah. four months instead totally. of, like, one week. <laughs> you yeah. know, well, like, you so. think about, like, yeah. postpartum, you're mm. healing all the ligaments totally and sense. tissues and muscles. Mm. And so we're, like, bone broths, organ mm -hmm. complexes, mm -hmm. slow-cooked meats, like, get all of that in you. Get all the glycine, get all the amino acids, totally. everything. And for somebody, you know, in L.A., this was... um can I drink smoothies or mm. they're, they're cold and your body it's like mm. postpartum is a cold state if mm -hmm. you're into eastern medicine and so they're like mm. absolutely not like mm. you need warm teas warm Makes foods sense. yeah, yeah. Mm. and every single like now it's almost mandatory for people that are working with us like you have 30 days lying in and that's focused on what you put in and on your mm. body um, awesome. And then after four weeks, then we can start moving with like birth with basic stuff. Totally again. makes sense. Yeah, but like it's it goes right back to recovery and healing mm -hmm. ligaments and connective totally. tissue. Yeah, no, it, pelvic floor. I, I have a good one, and you can try to remember this or whatever. We talk about <laughs> it. We talk about traditional diet. So probably the earliest recorded human advice on diet it depends on how you look at it. So. I have this big blog that I, I'm still waiting to write and it's, it was really, I was kind of processing this whole thing on the origins of vegetarianism because it all comes down to basically Jainism and early yoga and all, they're, they're the origins of it really. Mm. And uh, the Jains are extremely, I mean, it's a religion, it's, it's the height of idealism on some level where you're not going to eradicate any life form to where you're walking with like a broom to push, you know, insects out of the way. You go naked because an insect mm -hmm. might get caught in your fabric. I mean, it's extremist in, a, in, a, in a, a very profound way. That being said, so like, and I'm used to dealing with like Indian uh, and like India, Indian populations mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Typically very vegetarian. But like, if you look back in the Rig Veda, which is the oldest, real, like sort of in some sense, one of the old, oldest texts that exists on the planet. Okay. It was passed on orally well before it was ever written down. So mm. this is an oral tradition that really goes before written traditions. Yeah. The earliest dietary advice that exists on the whole planet is bone broth soup for pregnant women. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it's like, so, and that's the thing too, like, and this is something that, you know, the modern Indian psyche has difficulty processing is that all the Rig Vedic poetry and all that, they're all cowboys. They're cow herders and they're all eating beef and suggesting that you eat beef. Hinduism is an amazing thing that has changed over like yeah. so many years, whereas now it's like no beef, don't eat beef. Yeah. But like the origins of the Vedas is all cowboys eat, eat. herding cows and it's impolite not to serve your guests beef and stuff like that. So it's a, I mean, it's a wild thing. In a person, I'm sure like a, a Hindu scholar could sit down and explain to me the change and they would yeah, they have their reasons yeah. they have their orthodoxy for that that's fine i don't have any yeah. problems with that but they're just 
here are these facts that exist yeah, though at the beginning though that. like where it's like you know the earliest dietary advice we can find and this is like you know basically bone broth for yeah. pregnant women <laughs> like that's amazing yeah it is yeah. amazing like and so there's something i don't know so I, when i found that i found that really i was like doing this really deep dive because I have this strong academic background in the yoga field and stuff, and I love the academics of it all and yeah. everything. And I still read, you know, that that work here and there, even though it's just onerous and um, and irrelevant, <laughs> irrelevant to most people. But people just tell so many lies about the yoga tradition that they just get tired of it. And I I'm feel like, like and, it got so, and I don't know much about yoga because mm -hmm. I've only done I've done yoga teacher mm -hmm. training, mm -hmm. but I'm sure it was very commercialized, and that's. Sure. Like, Kind of what I feel happened is that lost the essence of it. Well, I mean, just everything you're seeing in the 20th century is just is gymnastics at the end of the day. Short. Mm -hmm. I mean, this could be a whole podcast on yeah. itself, but yeah. like, essentially, have you ever heard of like uh, the physical culture movement in the early 20th century? Mm -mm. So everything in fitness that we're doing today is basically the the physical culture movement of the early 20th oh, okay. century. It's like people moved off the farms into the cities, oh, okay. and they were like suddenly getting out of shape. Because yeah. they're in cities, and and this physical culture movement started all yeah. yeah all over the world. You start seeing bodybuilding and all this kind it's of strength a, training, yeah. all this kind of stuff, because they weren't on farms anymore. It went you go from forty percent of the population in the early twentieth century is on a farm to by the nineteen seventies one percent. Wow, you know it's just yeah. this huge shift, right? And yoga was really just this meditative component of Hinduism and. It, is mm. very little to do with bending and stretching until the early, like around the 1920s, the Indians basically caught the physical culture vibe and wanted oh. to build their own physical culture. They integrated, they yogified it, so to speak. They integrated it with these texts and things like that. But all that bending and stretching largely just came <laughs> from European gymnastics. It's like less than a hundred years old. That pretty way. much, yeah. yeah, pretty much. I mean, we have some like I know there are con there are contortionists and stuff like that that we have proof of historical evidence wise earlier than that, but we don't have systematic yeah bending and stretching. And even when they start talking about the hatha yoga going back to the medieval period, it's like still there's not a lot of bending and stretching going on it's largely this kind of breathing techniques I was just say, breathing. cheese cloth through yeah. the through the nasal passages oh gosh, and all yeah, that kind of stuff that, like yeah. yeah fun fun it because it was physical but it didn't mean that they were necessarily doing physical activity it was like lifestyle now did anybody bend and stretch for four thousand years in india probably but that's the true everywhere yeah. there's gonna never gonna be a culture where people there's only so many ways to bend your body in different directions, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. All the Sanskrit naming and all that kind of Surya Namaskar. Surya yeah. Namaskar, the, the sun salutation comes from a bodybuilder. Dang. It doesn't come from like an Indian oh, tax. Yeah. Like okay. there's all this kind of fascinating stuff. Um, you can reach out to me and ask me the, oh about the best God, books to read. Long. Like, yeah. yeah, it's it's fascinating. I mean, and it doesn't cheapen it. It doesn't make it bad, but just don't go around telling lies. So that's my exactly, kind of thing. It's like, exactly. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with Iyengar and his teacher developing these things, but there is a lie there that like, this goes back mm -hmm. forever. That's not really true. It's still a cool thing in and of itself. Yeah. I don't have to lie about things for them to be <laughs> cool. It's like you going like, yeah, birth fit began 2000 years ago. It's yeah. like, but it didn't, you know? Yeah, like, crazy it's, ladies. It's like, <laughs> it, it, it can be good on its relative merits right yeah now and that's fine you know like mm -hmm. and that I don't know there's just weird parts of the tradition meditative stuff is 2,500 years old it's, that stuff is yeah. that old but also it's simply gotten better over time mm -hmm. I don't want to do what they did 2,500 yeah. years ago that that'd be like saying I want to heat my home the way they did it 2,500 <laughs> years ago like it's a technology yeah. that improves yeah. over time. Like we, we constantly get better, yeah. not constantly look for what it was that, yeah. You know, anyway, so yeah, I can That's go on the, on yeah, that. the meditation, the breathing was what got me, mm. like what I loved about yoga. And then mm. I was kind of, I liked training because it gave me more insight, but then I was like, 
I don't know about this. <laughs> so I, mean, yeah, I need yeah. to read more. I need to learn more. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the stuff people are doing is really balance oriented. They say they're working on your flexibility. I would argue when I look at most modern forms, I feel like they're working on your balance yeah. more than your flexibility. And I don't have a problem with that. That's fine. But again, I don't yeah. like bait and switch stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. like I don't want it like, oh, come in and do jujitsu. It's going to improve your, like, you have these gyms like, oh, I'm going to improve it's your self-defense. Lose weight. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in five days. Yeah, <laughs> just be, you got to be true to what it actually yeah, is. Yeah, totally. Stuff. But we totally. should probably, we should probably we'll get wrap. rolling on here. Yeah, I got to, I'll go on and on. It's so good having you on, Lindsay. Yeah, hey, thank you. How do people find out more about BirthFit? Like what's yeah, birthfit.com. Okay. Um birthfit.com, birthfit on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um those are really the easiest places, or you can just email us at info at birthfit.com. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Easy peasy. I always yeah. like to have that at the end so yeah. people don't have to hunt back through. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. That was fun.